problem seven here. Okay, problem seven says uh, x to the two fifths raised to the tenth. And let's go ahead and do these problems here. So uh, x to the two fifths raised to the tenth, that's right up here. What I have is when I have exponents raised to exponents and multiply, well, 2 times 10 is 20, so it would be 20 fifths, and 20 divided by 5 is 4, so the answer is x to the fourth. Problem number 8 is to simplify this expression. There is a common factor on the top of 6, and also a common factor of x, and a common factor of y. If I factor out that 6xy, that's the same as dividing each term by 6xy. 36 divided by 6 is 6, and I also have, factoring out an xy, I have an extra y here. Okay. So it'll be 6y. Now factoring out the 6xy from this expression, I have a minus. 6 goes into 42 seven times, and I have an extra x on this one. Now that I have a 6xy on the top and bottom, they cancel out, and so my answer is just 6y minus 7x. Well, problem number 9, it says uh, find the equation for uh, uh, that represents the volume of a right circular cone whose radius is t, so the radius is t, and height is equal to 4 times its radius. Well, it just told me a second ago that the radius is t, so 4 times the radius would be 4 times t. Now, it gives you the volume, gives you the equation for the volume of the cone, which is v equals 1 third pi r squared h. So now, substituting in what we know, we get v equals 1 third pi, the radius instead of being r is t, so instead of being r squared, it's going to be t squared, and instead of being h right here, it's going to be a 4t. So now, this is what we have. The 4, we can bring over with the 1 third, making it 4 thirds. Pi, a t squared times a t is t cubed, so the answer would be 4 thirds pi t cubed. Okay, number 10 is a messy one too. We've got a complex fraction, 2 over x minus 5 over y, all that over 7 over x squared minus 2 over y squared. Well, we've got to get a common denominator on the top fraction, which would be xy. Uh, what's extra here that's not in this denominator? A y, so take the y times the 2 to get 2y. What's in the common denominator that's not in here? An x, and x times 5 is 5x. On the bottom, the common denominator is x squared, y squared. What's in here that's not in there? A y squared, so it'll be 7y squared. What's in here that's not in there? An x squared, so that'd be minus 2x squared. So I'm dividing two fractions, which is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So it'll be 2y minus 5x over xy times the reciprocal of this, x squared y squared over 7y squared minus 2x squared. Now at this point, we can cancel some things out. This xy cancels out with one of these, leaving me just with an xy. And I don't think there's any other term here that will cancel out. This, uh, there's nothing else that factors out of that thing. So I would just be left with uh, xy times uh, 2y minus 5x over this stuff right here. That's 7y squared minus 2x squared. Okay, on problem 11, it says that the length of a rectangle is 4 times its width. So the length equals 4w. And it says if the diagonal of a rectangle is 17, okay, so here's my rectangle right here being drawn. And this diagonal right here is 17. Uh, it says what is the width of the rectangle? Okay, so this is, I'm just calling this the width, and this length here, it's not drawn to scale because this isn't four times bigger than that, but it's supposed to be four times as big as this, so that's why the length is 4w. Now, to tie this stuff together, we can use the Pythagorean theorem that this side squared plus this side squared equals this side squared, so that'd be w squared plus 4w, that quantity squared, equals 17 squared. Well, w squared is w squared, 4w squared would be 16w squared, and that equals 17 squared. Well, 1w squared plus 16w squared is 17w squared equals 17 squared. Divide through both sides by 17, and I get w squared equals, well, 17 squared divided by 17 is 17. So what is w squared? w squared is 17. What is w then? The square root of 17. And that only leaves us one problem left, and I'll get a clean sheet of paper for that problem. And the last problem here on the EA section,
Rob 12 says Tara made 3M over P dollars working at McDonald's. Joe made 6M minus 4 uh, over P dollars. Lynn made one and a third times as much as Tara. If they pool their money together, how much money will they have? Well, here's the situation on this problem. Pulling them together means that we need to add 3M over P plus the 6M minus 4 over P plus one and a third times this uh, 3M over P. So we need to add these together, 3M over P plus 6M minus 4 over P plus 1 and a third. Well, 1 and a third is the same as 4 thirds. So we need to take 4 thirds times the amount that uh, Tara made, which is 3M over P. So we need to take 4 thirds times the 3M over P. Okay, so this is 3M over P plus 6M minus 4 over P plus here the 3s will cancel out and I just get 4M over P. Now combining the like terms, 3M plus 6M is 9M plus 4 more makes 13M and the only constant up on the top is minus 4, so 13M minus 4 over P and that would be the answer to problem number 12. And as long as you got about half of those right, maybe 6 or 7 out of 12, you can go on to the next part of the test called the CLM section uh, which will determine if you need a uh, Math 93 uh, it, or Math 105 if you score under a certain point on the next section or Math 102 or higher. So we'll do that on the next video.